All right, let's look, let's look at this last one. Uh, we've got a rigid tank. It initially contains 1.4 kilograms of saturated liquid water at 200 degrees C. At this state, 25% of the volume is occupied by water, the rest occupied by air. Then heat is supplied to the water until the tank contains only saturated vapor. Uh, determine the volume of the tank, final temperature, pressure, and internal energy change of the water. Okay, we've got a rigid tank. Um, initially contains 1.4 kilograms of saturated liquid water uh, at 200 degrees C. I think it's helpful to kind of write, you know, wh what, what do we have at state one? State one, we have 1.4 kilograms of water. Uh, it is saturated liquid. That is a very valuable piece of information, right? It's saturated liquid at 200 degrees C. I could find, just knowing those two things, saturated liquid at 200 degrees C, I could find the V, the U, the H, the, you know, all those properties that that, that I want. Uh, so I think I'm going to go go that. I'm going to go to, what, what would that be? This is um, SI units, so I'm in Appendix 1. This is water, so I'm at tables A4567. This is saturated liquid, uh, so I'm in 4 or 5. And I'm given the temperature, so I'm at table A4. Table A4, um, let's go to that, property tables. Table A4 up here. At a uh, temperature of 200 degrees... C. Here we are. There's our temperature. Uh, there, that might be valuable. My, um, I, and I know it's saturated liquid. Maybe my specific volume, right? VF is point zero zero one one five seven. I'm going to write that down. Um, is anything else going to be valuable? I'm not sure, but but you know what? Actually, part uh, C of this problem it said calculate the internal energy change of the water. I think it would be helpful to go ahead and find the internal energy that we started with, 850.46. So I'm going to write those down uh, for me. The, the VF at state 1, or the V at state 1, is the VF because it said it was saturated liquid is 0 0.001157 meters cubed per kilogram. Uh, the H at state 1 is 850.46 kilojoules per kilogram. Okay, so how can I use that? How can I use that? Um, you know, I think last problem I kind of told you, the roundabout way it tells us the specific volume is to give us the volume and the mass. All right, here the roundabout way of telling us the volume was to give us the specific volume and the mass. Right? With specific, specific volume and mass, I can find volume, right? I can look at the units here to help me out, uh, but volume would be MV, right? Volume would be 1.4 kilograms uh, times the VF for 0.001157 meters cubed per kilogram. Um, I have a volume of 0.001619 meter cubed. But that is the volume of the water which only can only takes up 25% of the volume. This is 25% of total volume. So what is the total volume? Uh, multiply that times 4. Right? Total volume multiply that times 4 or or divide it by 0.25, right? So V total would be 0 .006476, 0 .006476 meters cubed. There we go. That is the answer to part A. That is the answer to part A. It was a weird way of getting there. But what do we do? We, we got enough information. We knew it was saturated liquid. We knew, knew it was at 200 degrees C. So I could find the specific volume. And from the specific volume and the mass, I could get the total volume uh, because it told us that the volume that we just calculated only takes up 25%. Okay. Now, heat is supplied. Now, heat is supplied uh, to 
into the water until the tank contains saturated vapor only. And, and do you see, it, it was kind of assumed that now it's filling up the, the whole volume right there of 0 0.006476, all right? And so I think we can assume it, it, it's a rigid tank. It, it's filling up this whole volume um, with now this, it's still, it's not losing any mass, all right? Mass has to be conserved. It doesn't tell us any of that water gets out. It's still, so maybe state two, still has a mass of 1.4 kilograms, but now it's taking up the whole volume, 0 0.00, <clears throat> six four seven six meters cubed <clears throat> that's roundabout way of telling us the specific volume right specific volume is big v divided by m point zero zero six four seven six meters cubed divided by one point four kilograms <clears throat> would be point zero zero four six two six meters cubed per kilogram so so that is a valuable piece of information that the specific volume at state 2 is 0 0.004626. All right, so there's one piece of information. Specific volume at state 2, 0 0.004626. Is there anything else that, that we know? It didn't say superheated. It said saturated vapor only. So the fact that it is saturated vapor at this um, volume would tell us that um, <clears throat> th those are the two sets of information, right? If, if this was like one of those uh, blank, fill-in-the-blank um, tables, uh, and I told you, hey, it's saturated vapor, and hey, its specific volume is 0 .004626, uh, what is everything else? What is everything else? That's enough information to find everything else. Uh, what else might we want to find what else might we want to find? Um, it's, it asks for the uh, final temperature. It asks for the final pressure. Um, and we probably need U so that we can find the change in internal energy. So uh, if you know it's saturated vapor and you know its specific volume is 0 0.004626, you need to go to a saturated table, either table A4 or A5, to um, <clears throat> to find the rest of these uh, properties. You could go to either, and you might get a little slightly different um, numbers, uh, but you could go to either. So let me go to table A4 or A5, and I'll kind of show you how it's a little bit different type of interpolation than we've been doing, uh, but we could do it. All right, table A4. It is saturated vapor, and it has a V of 0 0.00. 4626. And so I'm looking down here and I've got to go to the next table. 0, 0. And it is down there. But I see. I mean, it is between those two values. It is between those two values. And so I can interpolate it. The temperature, whoops, the temperature is going to, the temperature is going to be between these two values. The um, pressure is going to be between these two values, and then the U is going to be between those two values right there, right? The U is going to be between those two values. Right there. So, so if my uh, V is in between them at point zero zero four six two six, then let's interpolate all three of these. Now, <clears throat> when you're doing interpolation, it might be helpful to do, you know, three or four interpolations at the same time. So the way I like to do it, right? I like to do top point zero zero three one zero six minus bottom point zero zero four nine five three divided by middle, 0 0.004626, minus bottom, 0 0.004953. Uh, and then let's look at the temperature. The top minus bottom over middle minus bottom. And maybe even kind of, so, so there's, there's one equation I can solve for T, right? 
Um, maybe just go ahead and get that number right there. Oh, sorry. I'm, I, uh, I messed up. I messed up. I messed up. Sorry. Uh, this was, the, the, my T is on the bottom, 373.95. Because what I'm going to double check, I'm going to double check and make sure, does that number go with that number? You know? Do, do, do those numbers go with those? And then this one will go with that one. I'm trying to find the temperature at this specific volume. All right? So I could find that T. Uh, I would get a T of 371.3 degrees C, and I would make sure that makes sense. Uh, but I also want to um, interpolate the pressure. Top, 22.064 minus 21.004 over pressure that I'm looking for, 21.004. And just double check. Does this pressure go with those others? Does this pressure go with that one and does this pressure go with yeah that, that, that's that's the one I'm looking for uh, and then one last one the U sorry the pressure I would get three so, two, 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 two one three six seven kPa and then the U would be uh, two oh one five minus two two three oh point one over u minus 2230.1. And again, double check. Do, do that, does that go with the blues? Does that, that go with the pink? Does that go with the purple? Yes. All right, I would get a u, lowercase u, of 2201.5 kilojoules per kilogram. And then last thing that, I, that I'm trying to solve for, the change in internal energy, internal energy change of the water. Well, the U, I'm sorry, let's see. Y'all are probably yelling at me All right here. This was not H, this was U. All right, so the U initially was 850. The U final was 2201. So the change in U would be mass times the change in little u, right? 1.4 kilograms times 2201.5 minus 850.46 delta u, 1892 kilojoules. 1892 kilojoules. Whew, that was a, a good one. Take a step back, right? Always take a step back at these problems and re review right review your problems uh don't you know don't count the vowels don't get too bogged down into the little details look at the big picture look at the big picture we were told some information uh we were told the uh temperature and it was a saturated liquid from that i could find the u the v i could find anything i wanted uh i found the u because i knew later on i was going to need the u i found the v because uh, it was it was asking for the volume, right? So I found the V, uh, multiplied it, or, or I knew that this was only 25% um, of the volume, uh, so I multiplied it times 4 to get the total volume. And then state 2. State 2, I think, is a harder one, right? You have to figure out what it's really giving you. Um, because it was a rigid tank, and now it filled up the whole uh, tank, uh, my specific volume was this, and it told me it was a saturated vapor. So from those two bits of information, I could find anything else I wanted uh, and be able to interpolate, uh, be able to look at the right property tables and, and, and get those values uh, to answer what it asks for. All right?